Moments with Puzz, brought to you by Get Your Ass to Work, something that everyone can enjoy. Now on to the show. Stories like this that we're about to share with our guest who has been so kind to come on the show and take time out of her day. Stories like this are why we keep getting on the phone and why we keep helping people, even though you have to sort through piles of dog in order to find the gold at the end of at the end of the transaction. So today's guest is is the silver lining to the the real story of real estate of people who are actively prospecting and trying to get out there and help people in in the real estate game. So we want to welcome Wendy to our show today, and she's going to share her story of how we got in contact with her, how we helped her out, and what the results were. We're going to dive right in, and can you explain your situation before we called you? What was going on and why was it important in your life before we called you that had you in a position that you were in? Well, um, actually, I didn't realize the position that I was in until um, a girlfriend of mine had called me and told me that I was, my brother was losing the house that my mom had left to us in trust. So that's when Dan had called me. and um, So you had a family member who was living in in a house that your mom had left to the both of us and i was away in a different state and um he was losing it to foreclosure which was you know i didn't know about so when i got back here you found out all the information for me i couldn't get my mom's copy of the trust i couldn't get any information they wouldn't give me anything and you did all the groundwork for me and got the house up for sale before we lost it so before i lost everything right so what what had happened is you were left the home from your mother. Yeah, she left it to me and my brother. And the home was in good condition when your mother had passed. And then what had happened is a family member of yours had somewhat destroyed the property, but there was still value in the property. I didn't think personally there was any value in it at all after the damage that was done to it. But um, you praised it and gave me a different story, which totally shocked me because I was just ready to walk away from the whole thing. I was ready to just leave the leave it. I didn't think I'd get anything. And there's a reason why you didn't think you'd get anything. Your your the, your brother was living in the property. No power. No power. No water. No gas. Nothing. Nothing. And the inside of the property was completely destroyed. Destroyed. But there was still value in the property, even though it was in the condition it was in. We had just gotten a new roof. Thank God, because I think that's really what saved it. But the inside was, yeah, it was just definitely needed to be remodeled. It was just ruined. When I called you, you had just come back from Colorado. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Yes, I, yep. Okay. And at the time when we first met, you had not spoken with your brother. No, I haven't. I hadn't spoken with him yet. And that's when you came and picked me up and we went and just looked to see if the property was refinanceable. Um, and the structure was fine and whatnot. And um, I decided that day not to go up there on the property. You know, we just did looked at the outside of it. Because the person in the property was very combative. Yes, he was. They don't teach you that in real estate school. When you're going to real estate school, they are not going to tell you that you are going to have to deal with highly emotional properties, highly emotional people. And it can be extremely combative. So when you're taking your little contest and you think it's going to be easy when you get out of real estate school, just remember there's some serious that people are going through out there and you're getting your head into, <laughs> you're getting yourself into a lot more than you may have bargained for. So, we, so, so the problem we were facing with your property was the fact that there was money involved. There was money involved, in, but we owed money. Okay, so you owed money on the property, but there were, it was worth more than what was owed. You had a, a combative brother who really did not want to sell. Did not want to sell it. He would have rather have stayed in it, lost it to foreclosure, and squatted in it. But I'm it was sure. in foreclosure, and the bank was going to take it back. Yes, there was not just a little bit of money. There was tens of thousands of dollars in equity in this property that you were about to walk away from. One, because you didn't know that there was the equity in the property, but also because you didn't know what to do. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, if it weren't for you, I would have lost, I wouldn't have got anything. 
Not a penny. So interestingly enough, you know, tell us how I did get in contact with you. You had called the first time you called and you said you asked to speak to me and I was kind of rude, but um, <laughs> I thought you were a collector. Real That's collector. normal. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I'm like, and who wants to talk to her? But, I'm um, used to that. Yeah, and you're like, well, you had me down as an owner on Cold Street, and I used to be, but I had a condo that I had sold so my mom could retire because she got sick. So um, the first time I ever heard from you was before I went to Colorado, and then when I came back, all that was going on, and that's when I contacted you again right so but it was just by chance that you had me down as owner because I'm like oh that was forever ago you know I sold that place so my mom could retire so I got in contact with you through a cold call through a cold call I had I had and never I normally, met you yeah, before mm-mm, never no idea who you were nope in fact I had called on the wrong property we didn't know anything about you it was the wrong property that I that I called on oh that's funny see my mom sent you to me but you just happened to need help I happen to very much need help. Yeah, I truly believe my mom sent you to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just curious, what what would cause you to trust someone who you just talked to on the phone for the first time that I could actually help you out in this situation? You're just really confident and professional when when you're on the phone. You came and picked me up that day, remember, to go look at the place. Um, you said, well, where are you? I didn't have a car. I was staying at a friend's house. And um, you came and picked me up and we drove up there. That's when I decided not to go in because my brother had just chased my sister out of the house with an axe a couple of days before that. So right, it was yeah. serious. It was it was crazy. It was pretty bad. But I chose not to speak to them, or I didn't even want them to know I was in town yet. What I was doing, it was left to the both of us. But he wouldn't give me a copy of the trust, and that's when you helped me out with the trust. Yeah. So let's talk about some of those challenges that we faced. I mean, first of all, your brother was highly combative, and just getting him to comply to sell the home instead of letting it foreclose was a challenge. But then there was also a trail of paperwork that we were trying to track down. I mean, we're talking about trying to find a lawyer who may or may not have died. Or I retired. think he did die, but we weren't sure. Right. So, so talk about some of those challenges first with getting your brother in. You had to break through to your brother. And I did. I, I sat on the couch at night with him in how long? Um, I didn't speak to him since my mom passed. So um, it was almost a good year. So you had to reconnect with someone who was highly combative. And who I was very upset with also because of our personal um, situation. I went there at night because there was no electricity and he wasn't home. So I sat there on the couch with a little flashlight and waited for him to come home. And it scared the crap out of him when he walked through the door. And I pretty much just told him, you know, I don't care if I get one little tiny penny out of it. You're not taking that from me. The mortgage was so low for him to just throw it away like that. You know, when I was the one that had an income, I wanted to stay there. And he said he had roommates, this, this, and that. And then he was just ready to just throw it away. You know, not paying mortgage and living off the neighbor's water, you know, hooked up. It was just an embarrassment. He he was in a bad state. He was willing to throw my inheritance away. And and, and if it weren't for Dan, you, it, I, I would have I would have walked away from it because I was just ready to throw my hands up. And I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to deal with him. I didn't want to deal with my sister. I didn't want to deal with my in-laws. I didn't want to deal with anybody. I just wanted to walk away from it because I didn't think we'd even get 20 thousand for it you know <laughs> but it was it turned out to be a, I was shocked when when you gave me the first offer so so we had we had those challenges with your brother we had the challenges convincing him that hey you either comply and help us sell this property or you're going to get zero on the flip side of that there was a large financial upside for him to comply and to work with us but he thought he knew more than you so he thought oh if we get that offer that much on that offer then there's going to be more offers coming in thinking they're going to be higher which was stupid on his part so it was one of those situations where you have money that you're entitled to an inheritance from your mother that she worked her whole life for that was being held hostage by your brother yep i'm I'm just grateful for everything he did so we had to chase your brother oh, all yeah. over, all over in Everywhere, yes. He was wandering around town, and so we spent a lot of time driving. I remember I called you that day, and I said, you need to take the day off and come pick me up so we can go find my brother. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. And that was, that was to help him. 
It was to help him. It was to help him. In the end, he didn't want to sell, but he was just going to flush this money down the toilet. So the greater good was to go find his punk ass and get him to sign this paper. So moving this sale, we did get it up for sale. He did get it up for sale immediately. Immediately, days within. I mean, just like boom, boom, boom. It happened so fast. I was like, no way. You know, I just couldn't believe how quick it happened. And then we started the process of the escrow period and getting him moved out, which was interesting because there was so much junk and litter and trash on the property. So you're over there helping him. I was trying to. I was trying to help him. Um, he didn't want the help, but I was, you know, wanted to him to be out for you, you know. I mean, because he was going to lose everything if he didn't, because as soon as the offer goes through, it belongs to the person who bought the house, right? <laughs> I think the property owner, the guy, that, the man who bought it, um, he, he allowed my brother a, a couple, couple more days to get his stuff off. But the escrow and just just everything, I mean, it was, you were just awesome at everything you did. I mean, I didn't really have to... I mean, I remember calling you and saying, is there anything that I need to be doing, you know? And you were like, nope, you just need to be there when I call to sign papers, whatnot. And Tried to talk me out of helping I did. me several I times. I did try to talk you out of helping me several times. I'm like, man, I can't blame you for walking away. I know it's just insane because it was embarrassing. I love you, and I think you're the most wonderful person in the world, and you've just gone above and beyond for me, and I appreciate everything that you've done for me. Right. Well, thank you for that. And so for real estate professionals, what, like we're talking about, for the real estate people, anybody in a sales position, or anybody who's trying to achieve a goal maybe they haven't met yet, you're going to hit a lot of resistance if you're on the phones, you're going to get a lot of people telling you to f- yourself. You're going to get all kinds of negativity coming at you every single day. But there are people out there who absolutely need your help. So in a way, I'm doing this interview for myself to remind myself when I'm having a bad day. that Hey, there are people out there that can really use your can help and you have to keep going because trust me I don't feel like getting on the phone every day and doing that either but there is a reward for it and you do get to help real people solve real problems on the other end of it the people you are helping are are sometimes in a very desperate situation and they don't know what to do they don't know where to go, and there are a lot of king parasites, and there's a lot of vultures out there who will prey on these people because they either don't know any better or they don't have the right coaching and guidance. And that's all I'm really doing as a real estate agent. I am coaching and guiding people through my experiences to help them get to a place, what whatever their goals are, and there's a lot of people out there that don't know how to take the first step. They don't know how to move forward, and so it's my job to go out there and find these people. And when I say there's a lot of parasites, there are people out there, other real estate agents, who will use these people to their own advantage to make money off of them. And that's very sad, but it's very real. So I feel in a way it's my duty to make phone calls and get told to cough all day so that I can find the few people that really, really need the help. So... Wrapping this up, how has this whole thing helped you out, you know, financially? I know you told me when we started that you wanted to be able to leave something. For my daughter, my 16-year-old. And so I did. Um, I was able to buy myself a car, which I needed badly, (laughs) get my um, debts paid off, get my, you know, get myself on my, you know, back on solid ground, um, uh, yeah, I put money in an account for my 16-year-old who gets half when she graduates and half when she wants to move out. <laughs> um, so um, she's uh, happy with it, and and it's just been just great. And you were ready to walk away from this deal, and even after I called you, you probably 
didn't think it could be done, but you trusted someone you met. I totally did. I did. I totally trusted you. I didn't. Um, I, and I'm like, there's no way we can even get twenty thousand dollars for this place. I just, honest to God, that's what I thought. You know, it's just, it's just so trashed. I mean, every window was broken. I mean, it was just trashed. You know, paint, five gallon bucket of paint spilled on the floor. I mean, holes in the walls. I mean, it was just terrible. It was just awful. My mom would be not happy. Did trust you? I don't know. I don't know why. I just did. Like, I just had every confidence in you. I mean, every confidence in you. First time you picked me up, dropped me off, remember that when you were there? And, um, uh, yeah, I was just like, I'm like, oh, my God, he knows. He's so professional. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's so smart. And I'm here I am going, huh? <laughs> you know, because I know nothing about anything when it comes to real estate, you know, or equity or on top of all of it. Yes, I did trust you and would I would recommend you to anybody. Awesome. Now, so knowing what you know now, there are other people out there that are in your position. In fact, we were talking about this before the show today that I'm now helping two other people in the same exact position, one of them in even worse, in, in a worse position than you were in. There are other people out there. There's a lot of people who are going to listen to this podcast who may have a friend, a family member who's in a position where they don't know what to do next. What What do you recommend they do? Well, I recommend, first of all, even if you're – property or you think your property is worth nothing or has no value with at all inquire within because like I was going to walk away from my place you know because I didn't think it had any value at all we got money from it you know I mean we got enough money for myself and he got enough money and I got money to give my daughter and um and I still got money (laughs) so um I just um think that you should really uh take the time and 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 call somebody to come, come help you, you know, call Dan. You're a success story. The dark side to it is, is I also meet a lot of people who end up losing and it goes back to the bank because they didn't take any action or they didn't know who to call or they procrastinated and waited too long. Luckily you were very coachable and you allowed me to do what I needed to do to help you. And you worked very hard during this. You put in a lot of work and a lot of your own time to make this happen, which is really the key ingredient to making. You definitely have to put your share of the time in to do what you need to do to get what you need done because your job is really just to help out with. Well, I mean, you you did above and beyond as far as I'm concerned, you know. I mean, um, but I wouldn't have even known where to start with anything. I mean, I couldn't even, I didn't even know the name of the lawyer. My mom's lawyer. You know, I didn't know any of it. I couldn't. We had to discover. We had to discover. Yeah, we had to discover that. We had to discover how much was owed. We had to get, you know, my brother wouldn't give me a copy of the trust. Um, uh, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know if, you know, I couldn't hire a lawyer. I didn't have a penny to my name. You know, I didn't have anything. And I, my friends, you know, if it weren't for my girlfriend that texted me and said, you need to get your ass on the, you know, next plane home, you're going to lose everything. Your brother's losing the house. I'm like, no, you know, I, I truly, I didn't believe her at first. And then she's like, I'm not kidding. You need to get home. So my girlfriend put me on the airplane and boom, here I was. And it just went so fast. I mean, it just happened so fast. It was great. Well, it was over a period of three months. It seems like it was fast now, but it, it did take a while. Well, three months. I mean, yeah, but to me, I mean, it, it, it went super fast. <laughs> I mean, for me, it was just like, whoa, you know, I mean, I wouldn't have expected, I didn't expect it to go like that. Yeah, perfect. So if you are in that position, you know somebody who's in that position. If you're not in the northern Nevada area, you're listening to this podcast in another state, I can still help you um, find the right person, the right agent who I can refer you to uh, that would be able to get you through a difficult transaction like this because I do my own research. So the first step is to take action and reach out to a real estate professional who you either know, trust to advise you properly or to reach out to someone like me who will advise you on who to go check in with because people typically will give up a property back to the bank and lose tens of thousands of dollars when they really could have made a lot of money that they are entitled to it. Awesome. So guys, everyone who's listening, if you're in this position, reach out. If you're on the other end where you're the agent or you're in the sales position, you know, you can help people. You keep making those, those dials. You keep getting on the phone. You keep showing up to work every day, even when you don't want to, because there's someone 
who really need your help out there, and it's your job to go find them. Thanks for coming up, Wendy. We appreciate it. And as we always say on this podcast, get your ass back to work. We'll be right back.